So uh, if you're growing for market like we are where we have a CSA where every week for 20 weeks we're committed to getting a bag of stuff to our people, yep. um, we want to be able to do that even though they understand they're kind of sharing the risk with us, you know, so if you have a really bad time or bad experience or something, you know, it's going to affect them. They understand that. But um, I would say that um, for the long range success of your CSA, you want to have a good bag of stuff for them right. almost every week, you know, for most people and um, to keep your to keep that going. So, um, having um, a diversity of crops makes it more possible for uh, you to do that. Um, there's going to be something, you know, that more likely you're going to be able to have. Um, so there's that, the marketing angle. Um, diversity really helps, I think, with the, um, uh, the, the pest management because by having a variety of crops and by rotating them then, you know, putting them in different areas mm -hmm. from one year to the next or from one season to the next, you're, um, you're, you're not building up the same kind of pest uh, from a crop being grown in one place like all the time or having just one or two crops which are going to build up a lot of mm -hmm. pest as well. So it's, it helps with your pest management. Um, and um, um, well. it um, the, the, I would say that the other side of that is uh, that um, you know you can become um, that the more diversity you have, the more you have to manage. So there's sure. that part of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> of uh, and it can it can be um, more easily overwhelming, I think. Um, but um, um, but like you know, I feel like. You know, a common thing that people ask you when you're growing like this is like, well, you know, uh, you have bad, you have a drought or you have a bad weather season, uh, bad storm, hurricane, something, you know, that, that couldn't that just wipe you out? And well, it, um, if you're growing a, a, for a longer period of time in a diversity of crops, probably not. I mean, you're probably, you might lose several things, you know, but you're not going to lose everything. You're not going to lose the farm over the season. Sure. Whereas if you're growing like one thing, like corn, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what you're dependent on, or maybe two things for the year, corn and wheat, you know, and that's all you're growing for that year. Sure. You know, if you have a couple sort of major weather events or, or pests, and it's going to, it is going to wipe you out, yeah. you know, which they can get crop insurance, sure. <laughs> which I don't have, so, <laughs> so maybe not. But, <laughs> But anyhow, but no, I mean you could lose your crop, um, and so uh, and so really the risk um, is um, the risk is min minimized, you know, by uh, by diversity. And, and you said earlier, Charlie, that you know it is more complex; it's a little more difficult to manage. But you yeah. seemed to indicate that was part of the fun. It's part, part of the, of the fun. Of it. it is. It actually is. Even though I complain about sometimes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the difficulty of managing it all. It, it's part of why I really like doing it. And it, it's the kind of farming I grew up with. I mean, I grew up on an old-fashioned kind of small-scale diversified farm where we had not only a variety of crops, but we did have 15 dairy cows and we had 300 or 400 chickens and we had turkeys and we had, you know, more pigs. And I mean, we had a lot more animals on the farm in addition to the field crops, in, and, and then also had some vegetable crops as well. So uh, it's in my blood. I mean, I grew up with that kind of mixture of things. And, uh, and it, uh, it's always what kind of made it interesting to me. So work-wise, I think it's better too, because if you are if you got a, a wide variety of things like this, you know, it's not like you're spending like every day doing the same thing Absolutely. over and over and over. Yeah. You know, you get to switch off from one thing to the other. So it makes the work better. Stretch you know. some different muscles. <laughs> Stretch different muscles and, um, you know, I mean, even as much as you might enjoy, like, you know, harvesting any particular kind of crop or growing a crop, you know, you're going to get tired of doing that if that's all you're doing for a day in and day out. Um, you know, when I see, you know, big ag, pictures of big ag and these huge fields of, like, strawberries, and I see the you know endless rows of strawberries, and I see these workers out there who are picking strawberries from sun up to sundown, literally. You know, I think you know this is exploitation of people. I mean, strawberry picking doesn't have to be 
bad. I mean, it, it you know, it, it is harder kind of work, but you know, we don't do it for more than maybe two or three hours at a time, then you stop. Yeah. You know, you do something else then. <laughs> sure. You know, but uh, uh, when you have just huge fields of something and that's what you got to get done, um, you know, then the work is, is really onerous, really is onerous, and, uh, and the workers are easily exploited, I think. So, so it's just that as well. I mean, I think about growing diverse things because I, I really want for people, I want for myself and my family, but also for the workers that are here, for this to be more than not a pleasurable working experience. I want it to be more than not pleasant work and not and there's there's that not the of course it's going to be days when it's going to be 96 degrees and we got to pick the tomatoes and you're going to be hot you're going to be buggy but you know it's it's just a piece of things you know it's not the whole experience all the time and so when you're doing uh, a lot of different things uh, you can live with those unpleasant kind of times because you know that's not all it's going to be